anybody who um, who expected me to sing, I won't be. So you can, <laughs> you, can you can log off now if you like. Um, but I will, I will not be singing. Um, I when I was younger, I when I was in a band, I rapped a little bit, but. Oh, no. <laughs> can you do a backflip, Steve? I mean, yeah, I was gonna say, maybe you could do that a little. Uh... I uh, considered writing a rap for this, but I'd rather just sort of just talk about it. <laughs> so, um, but maybe when we did when we meet for our drinks, you can get me to. Definitely, Martha definitely raised the bar on all of our friends. <laughs> yeah. We can do a duet. Oh, I like it. I like it. Like a little. Uh, like a Lincoln Park type of thing. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so uh, this is not a presentation in, in full disclosure that I came up with, but it's one that we use a lot. And we do a lot of presentations with, with major organizations who are, who are finding challenges. Um, you know, where our workforce is, uh, is, is old and, you know, as, you know, really not as old, but is, is, it's, is spread out as it's ever been. Um, people are starting their jobs in their teens and they're finishing them in their 70s. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, and it's also sort of a life lesson. There's, a, there's, there's interactions that you have in life between people who are much younger than you who just, they just don't get it. Um, or, you know, or, you know, they're just, you know, they're too young and they're unexperienced and, you know, it just, it helps bring people together. And it's a little good to understand, you know, that some of the factors that drove and, 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 and shaped us as we, as we went through our lives. So, um, you know, basically it's, you know, we, we're broken down to a bunch of different generations. Um, the traditionalists, you know, there's probably not much of them working anymore. Um, you know, the baby boomers, Generation X, uh, which is me, uh, the millennials, and then now, which is Generation, Generation Z. Um, you know, when you look at the, the traditionalists, the things that, that sort of drove um, their, their, you know, their lives. And, you know, when you, when you think about it and you, and you try to overlay it with the, the person, uh, it all sort of, it sort of, sort of clicks. Um, you know, it started with the recession, um, you know, the, uh, the end of segregation in schools, um, Jackie Robinson, you know, breaking the color barrier in profession or sports, you know, even the automobile, and the prevalence of the automobile from the 20s into the 40s. Um, and then World War II. I mean, World War II still has a lasting impact uh, on all of our lives. Uh, when you think about how the traditionalists are at work, you know, they're loyal, they're team players, you know, they, they don't buck the trend too much. Um, you know, and you know, it's, and I get this a lot from my grandmother. It's, you know, why do you wanna, it works fine the way it is, why change it? Um, you know, but the, but the thing is, is, you know, because they had so much uncertainty, whether it was the, rece the depression or the war or, or um, you know, or the, the changes into, you know, the boom times of the 50s, you know, they like the stability and comfort of knowing where their next meal is coming from. They know that where their next paycheck is coming from. Um, and, and, and for that, they will, they'll commit to you. Um, they're stable, um, just jumping through some things. You know, they're loyal, they have a good work ethic. Um, you know, they don't like conflict. They just want to go to work uh, and they want to come home. Um, as long as you tell them what they're going to do and when they're going to do it, and you don't lie to them. They're very happy uh, as a workforce. Um, as we go to sort of the boomers, uh, you know, they had the Vietnam War uh, impacting their lives, which is a very unpopular uh, war to some people and popular to others. Uh, the assassination of JFK, you talk to any baby boomer, they know where they were uh, when JFK was assassinated. And that had a lasting and still has a lasting impact on people's lives. And of course, uh, when we put the man on the moon, uh, it was a great time for, for unity in our country uh, in a time when our country needed unity. Um, the civil rights movement, um, that's a picture of Woodstock. And then um, the civil rights movement of the 60s, the, uh, you know, the marches and the, and the advancements in those areas. And those are still sort of traits when you think about baby boomers, they carry with them today. Um, you know, they have a strong work ethic. Um, you know, there was that, that was the generation that's, that strove to be better than their parents and their parents wanted them to be better than them. Uh, they're competitive. They're very goal oriented people. Um, they are resourceful uh, because, you know, they started, it was the very beginning and we get a little more into this 
of of kids being on their own and and, and one and two parents working at a time in the expansions of college education. Um, they're a very team oriented uh, group of people. Um, strengths is they they're they're out to please. They're service oriented people. Uh, they're they're amiable. They can build relationships with them, and they play along nice. Um, for the first time, they had a little money in their pocket, more so than other generations. Uh, so they wanted to spend a little bit of it. Um, they don't like conflict, um, and they're very process oriented. Um, to retain them, you know, you can't tell them what to do. I think it's a two-sided type of situation where you want to understand what they're going at and what they're what's important to them. Um, it was the first generation where retirement plans were a big deal. Uh, and people started to think about retirement savings because they had that disposable income. Uh, moving on to Generation X, which is, you know, what are the important things in our lives? The, you know, the, the, the explosion of the Challenger. Um, I remember January 28th, I was actually homesick from school. My entire class was watching it. And I was upset I couldn't be in school watching that moment. Um, uh, the dot-com bubble uh, was what started uh, for this generation back in, in, the, in the mid to late 90s. Um, the introduction of the internet, you know, it was a different sort of lifestyle for, for a lot of these people. The fall of the Berlin Wall was a big deal. Um, you know, the race riots associated with Rodney King and, you know, what's, what started a movement that's even being carried through into today. Um, and then the latchkey kids, you know, uh, most people, a lot of people had two parents working. Uh, that was me. Uh, my mom and my dad worked and, you know, I was basically taking care of myself and uh, making, learn to cook for myself and, you know, go to school and came home and had to get my homework done and before everybody came home from work. Um, we are independent. Um, I've always been an independent person as a, I guess, as an exer, uh, problem solvers. Um, it's the first time we started to drink, glo think globally as a as a generation and that's because the, the globe was finally available to us um you know as the internet uh came about um and uh you know advancements in technology um we were able to see other parts of the world and be a part of other parts of the world without having to go um work-life balance uh, i was very active in in you know from my own experience as a coach my entire career. And I always made it a point to get home from work. And you know, like a lot of Wall Streeters would have a place in the city, or if they're in late, they would just stay over. My own personal goal was to always make sure that I got home every single night, no matter what time it was. Uh, and informal. Um, you know, we were the first generation that really started pushing the suits out the door. Um, again, in my own experience, I haven't worn a suit since 2002. Um, we are creative. We're not intimidated by authority. And I think that comes from the fact that um, you know, we were a little more independent than the previous generation. We didn't have a parent home consistently, a lot of us, uh, during that time. Um, as a challenge of impatient, I am number one person in the world who's impatient. Um, I want everything done now. I want it done. I am extremely type A in everything that I do. Um, you know, I don't know if I agree with cynical, um, but I think everybody and every generation has a high degree of cynicism uh, in their in their time, um, attract and, you know, to retain people. Um, you know, we do work to live and not live to work, which is a big difference from previous generations. Uh, we, you know, as, as an exer, and I keep saying we, um, we, uh, you know, we have the disposable income to, to, to do more things, you know, golf has grown, boating, hiking, fishing, working out has become a big part of people's lives a lot more um recreational activities became introduced to our generation other generations really didn't have the time or the resources uh to do um you know we all had this sort of upward mobility type of views in our lives too where uh you know the and i know at least again going back to my situation i'm sure is the same thing with a lot of you your career path was if you want to be successful went from high school you know you had to go to college and then after college you know it, it's always a, a a master's and, and and your level of education in a lot of people's minds would would ultimately define where you ended up uh, on the on the success spectrum. Um, you know, we've all learned over time that that's not necessarily true, and whoever works the hardest in life uh, tends to win. Uh, millennials, uh, you know, their big you know the big influences of their life was you know Columbine, which 
Um, you know, I guess the Virginia Tech shooting back in the 60s, I believe, was, a, was, was the first real sort of mass school shooting incident. But Columbine today still impacts, you know, all of our lives. Um, the World Trade Center, you know, they were all growing up and they were all in school when they sort of heard about it um, and, and the impact that that had. Uh, and now on its social media, right, Facebook came about to this crowd. Uh, the iPhone, um, you know, really cutting, you know, the proverbial cord and becoming more of a mobile society and an on-the-go society impacted these people. And then a lot of them, you know, during the Great Recession, well, the second Great Recession of 2008-9, you know, graduated college without, you know, and didn't have jobs. Um, so what you had was a was an educated and, and, and unemployable sort of class of, of individuals who've had to sort of reinvent themselves over the last 10 years. Um, they're more socially aware than, than previous generations. Um, they're more tolerant and inclusive um, than other generations. The internet and their access to technology has made them more efi efficient. Um, they're much more balanced people. Uh, and I see it when I place people, when you, when you, when you, when you look at millennials, they're really more concerned about the perks of the job than the pay. Um, they really want to make enough money to pay their bills, but they also want enough, they want to have the flexibility in their life to do um, things for themselves, which is an advancement again from, from our generation. And they're very, you know, when I, when I said social, but they do, um, and you'll see this, I think a little later on, they're very socially aware and they care more about the jobs and what their companies they work for do, as opposed to, um, you know, just getting the paycheck and going home. Um, so you'll you'll see people refuse jobs because they disagree with their general um, philosophies. Um, you know, pol pol potential strengths, collective actions. I mean, I think we're seeing that live um, now on how this is an age group that will band together uh, for something that they believe in. Um, and when you look at, you know, they don't stop. Um, you know, they're very good at doing multitasking uh, because that's been their lives. They've had, you know, from school book to iPhone, back to school book, to their computer, back to, to whatever. Um, and they're technologically savvy. And that's, that's sort of where you start running into conflicts with, with the older um, generations. Um, on the other side, because of all these technologically advances, you know, they're not very good uh, in handling conflict. And, you know, to, to their detriment, and a lot of times they don't know how to uh, handle a difficult issue, whether it's at work or in person. And um, a lot of times you'll have a result that, that, that could have been avoided. And <clears throat> within this generation, I think that's, that's a struggle that I see um, where people will, um, if they're not happy, they'll just walk away from a situation because that makes them comfortable as opposed to figuring out a way to handling it. And I think we could all agree when we were younger, uh, it was either handled through a, a yelling match or a fight or an argument or something, but we were all, you know, half hour, hour later, everything was sort of forgotten and we, and we moved on. And um, for me, I, I see that as a big struggle with the millennial um, generation. Um, you know, they want, up, they, want, they want the ability to grow within a company and if they don't see it, they'll leave. Um, you know, the millennials and, and you know, really, especially the Generation Z are very, um, you know, they're, they're not, they're the least loyal of all the generations um, to a company. Uh, they, they will move, um, statistically, they move more uh, and they change jobs more. They're not uh, concerned with creating a long-term 15, 20 year existence as much as the companies think they are, they just don't. Um, so, in, and to do that, you know, they need, they need their mentors. They need people to guide them uh, along the way, they, you know, this flexible work schedules, if anything came through in the pandemic, is that this is a, something that they love and is going to continue to, to, to be a thing going forward. However, it worked. A lot of companies have been able to make work from home work. They've been able to make, um, you know, flexible hours work. And when you look at like, you know, you take a Lockheed Martin who owns Sikorsky right now, their work schedule is, you know, you work, work 10 hours a day, Monday through Thursday, and you're done for the week. And those 10 hours don't have to be conventional. You can do three in the morning, three in the afternoon, and four at night after the kids go to bed. 
um, as long as you complete your task at hand. And that's something um, that the technological improvements that they're comfortable with um, are that generation is, is, is best to really sort of grasp and grow with. And Generation Z, you know, they don't really have a lot of big moments in their life. I think their moments are just beginning. Um, you know, they're, they're, the next, they're really the next generation of ours. They're my kids. Uh, my oldest was born in 1996. He's a welder. Um, and, you know, they're sort of forging their own interests and what's important to them. Um, the one thing is clear is that um, they don't have to be in Fairfield, Connecticut anymore to live. They can be anywhere they want. They can work anywhere they want. They can have a job in New York and live in Texas. It's a much different world for them. And, and you know, they're very, you know, they're very tech savvy. Everything with them uh, is snippets and social media. Uh, they live their lives essentially in a series of uh, short-term events. And, you know, that's sort of, you know, with their job, they become very good multitaskers because they don't really focus on a lot of things at once. And when you look at, um, you know, this, this generation of, of, of people who, you know, live their life in events, you know, they're going to make up, you know, between millennials and, and Generation Z in just a few short years, um, you know, over 60% of our workforce. So what we, what you, what you really need to do is, is as a, as a company is, 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 is teach all generations to learn from each other. I think they all have something to, to, to add. And I think, you know, the, the nose to the grindstone work ethic of the boomers and, and Gen X uh, is something where the millennials can teach, that they can teach the millennials and Gen Z. And, and when the, the tech savviness and the ability to do your job, but you don't have to be at a place to do it and to enjoy life a little more is something the millennials and, and Gen Z can teach the older generations. And, you know, I have one company who does it very well. Um, I have three people who are working there who are between 69 and 74. And I have three people who are working there who are, who are between 20 and 30. And um, whatever they're doing, and, and I'm, my, my goal is to learn a little bit more about it. Um, when I go there, they're all having coffee together and joking around. And, you know, the biggest point is we can all learn from each other no matter where we work, what we're doing, um, there's experience, life experiences we can all share, even if we don't have a lot of life experiences. Um, Generation Z, you know, again, I, I talked about snippets. It's a fast moving job. You want to change things. They, you know, I don't know if they multitask across five screens. Um, in my peak, I had eight uh, in my old job. Um, but, but they are not a plugged in world. Um, everything for them is internet based. Everything is cloud based. Um, and that's sort of where they are, they're most comfortable. Um, what does Generation Z care most about is, uh, you know, they want their health care. Um, and for them is a wellness program and staying healthy. And, that, and the wellness really comes down to quality of um, life, quality of experience, um, and quality of the work environment. Uh, they're not necessarily, like I said, that really concerned about what the pay rate, as long as that pay rate allows them to have their niceties or their, their amenities in life that they would want. Um, just finishing up quickly, because I know we're short of time. Um, you know, they say treat their employees as they treat their customers. You know, I guess that's, you know, I, that's, that, that's sort of important to me because I'm the middleman in what I do for a living. So I treat everybody as a customer. Um, if I have a smart associate, or a real capable associate, they're, they're a customer of mine as well. I don't want to lose them. If I have a very good client, they're a customer of mine and I don't want to lose them. So um, really when you when you think about people, you, you're you always selling. You're always selling yourself. You're always selling your business. You're always selling your experience. Um, you know, within the workplace, uh, stagnation, especially to the younger groups is is murderous. Um, it's It's important to teach them different skill sets and continue to teach them, rotate them through uh, different jobs and opportunities, but putting somebody in a job that is uh, coming out of the younger generation right now for them is boring and, and they'll look to move on. Um, you know, assume everybody's gonna, you know, going to 
um, you know, is bringing their best to the table every day. And, and until they prove you wrong, assume that, um, and, and, you know, the last point I would make up is statistically, and I have the numbers, but I didn't put, make a chart because I kind of don't know how, um, but the, the workforce of 50 and older is a much more reliable and loyal workforce to a company than the workforce of 20 to 30. Um, so when, when people are looking, when companies are looking for that next, uh, you know, new hire where they can keep people for 15 or 20 years, the reality is the person who's over 50 will stay with you longer. So it's important as a, as a business owner to understand that uh, you won't, you know, you're not going to get this lifetime employee just because they're young. You're gonna get, uh, you have a better chance of having somebody staying longer actually because they're old. So uh, give everybody, I would say, give everybody a shot. Everybody has a lot to offer to your organization and that's sort of it in 20 minutes. Awesome, man. You did great. Great job. As I whip through it. 